The topic for today is diagnostic approaches to the snoring child. Is it time to go home? Now, this is some may seem a little bit of a surprising title, but there are some elements that are very important. One, snoring occurs in a very large proportion of children, and we should never take snoring as a normal feature that occurs in anybody, certainly not in children. We have shown before, and I will present you very intriguing data on how snoring, and of course it's correlate of a subset of children that snore and have sleep apnea, how these two conditions can affect both behavior, cognitive function, cardiovascular function. And then we will proceed with a more in-depth examination of the literature and our work uh, regarding on how best to conduct a screening and diagnosis of these two frequent conditions and bring them into the attention of, for both medical and dental treatment that they may need. I hope that you will find most of this work uh, very revealing and novel. Uh, it really epitomizes a large number of studies that have been conducted over the last uh, 40 or so years, and we're very close to uh, identifying unique ways in which there must be a multidisciplinary collaboration between multiple disciplines, including dental and medical disciplines, in order to promote uh, the well-being and the optimal outcomes, not only immediately, as uh, we obviously want to treat the children and get immediate results, but also as a way to prevent uh, the occurrence of long-term consequences into adulthood. So I, I am Dr. David Gozal. I'm currently the professor and chairman at the University of Missouri in Columbia and uh, the director of the Children's Hospital here. And I hope that uh, in our discussions and presentation, you will find uh, the unique ingredients that will enhance your practice and your understanding of this very important topic. Thank you.